Hey everyone, welcome back to the AZ104 exam preparation series. So in today's video, my friends, what I have done is rather than focusing on one single concept, I have bring some mixed bag of questions exactly the way you get in the real AZ104 exam. And this will help you really bend your mind, really start your thinking and will help you to arrive at the right answers. And also I will tell you tips and tricks how to find the right keywords and the hints in the question so that you are able to arrive at the correct answers. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. And here comes the very first question for today. So here we have question number 201 part 35. It says that your company has 10 different departments and you have an Azure subscription that contains several hundred virtual machines. Now the users for each department use only their department's virtual machine and you plan to apply resource tags for each department to the virtual machines. So which of the following two solutions should you use and each correct presents a complete solution. Now let's check out the options given. Here we have option A PowerShell, option B Azure Resource Manager or ARM Templates, option C App Registration and option D Azure Advisor. So the first correct option is option A PowerShell and the next correct option is option B Azure Resource Manager or ARM Templates. And friends Azure Tags is a very important concept. It really helps you manage the resources more efficiently. So assigning the tags to your virtual machine or any other resource for that matter, it really allows you to create reports and dashboards for alerting or maybe for budgeting or performance management. And you should remember from the exam perspective that the tags can be applied by using PowerShell, which is the option we have chosen here. It also can be applied using ARM. And not just that, you can also apply the tags using Azure CLI. And as I said, Azure tagging is a very important concept. So here on this documentation, you can understand the resource naming and tagging decision guide. So here, first of all, you can understand what is the resource management. So basically, how can you optimize your resources so that your IT team can easily work with them. And with the use of Azure Tags, your IT team will be able to quickly locate the resources that are associated with specific workloads, regions, environments and ownership. Then secondly, you can use the Azure Tag for the cost management and the optimization. So here you can see that your IT team can really understand the resources and the workloads that each team uses so that the business groups knows how much the resource are getting consumed. So let's say that you have a big company. Now you have several departments in your company. It could be finance, it could be HR, it could be IT. Now each department might be using some of the cloud resources and you want to really control. You want to really control the cost and the resources being used by each department. So what is the best way to do is so in this case, you can assign the Azure tags to each resource based on the departments. And when you generate the reports, your IT team will know that which resource is being used by which department. So this will really help you to control the cost based on each department. And not just that, my friends, Azure tags, you can also use for operation management, security, governance and regulatory compliance, automation and much more. So please read this concept very carefully. Really important concept, easy to implement, but really gives you a lot of power. And yes, before we move ahead with the other questions, let me remind you that please check out the previous videos where we have covered some important and the latest questions on Azure Monitor, Azure Virtual Machines, Microsoft Entra ID, Azure Biceps. And not only that, I've covered some important concepts like Azure Advisor, the difference between Azure Advisor and Azure Monitor. So please do check out the previous episodes as well. Now let's continue with the other questions. And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 202 that says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the Microsoft Entra ID tenant named Contoso.com and the Azure Kubernetes Service AKS cluster named as AKS1. Now, as an administrator, the administrator reports that she is not able to grant the access to the AKS1 to the users in the Contoso.com. Now, you need to ensure that the access to the AKS1 can be granted to the Contoso users. And did you already notice that this is the Azure Kubernetes service related question? Well, what's the big deal in that? Well, I will tell you once I've given you the answer and this will really help you to understand. Are you really focused on preparations for AZ104? Well, we will see that for now. Let's check out the options. Here we have option A from the Contoso.com modify the organization relationship settings. Option B from the Contoso.com create an OR 2.0 authorization endpoint. Option C recreate AKS1 and then option D from the AKS1 create a namespace. 
and the correct answer for the same is option B from the contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. Okay, so this is the Microsoft documentation that talks about the Microsoft Intro ID integration with the AKS cluster. So here you can read all about the cluster and how does it integrate with Microsoft Intro ID. But for now, I want to bring your focus to this section here that says that with the Microsoft Intro ID integration with the AKS cluster, you can grant users or the group access to the Kubernetes resources within the namespace or across the cluster. And then further down, you can also read that the Microsoft Intro authentication is provided to the AKS cluster with the OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect is an identity layer built on the top of OAuth 2.0 protocol. And that exactly validates our answer. But now you may be thinking why exactly I took this question. Well, just for the fact I wanted to bring to your notice that Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS is out of the syllabus. And similarly, my friends, there can be lot of popular concepts, lot of popular services that are out of syllabus for AZ104. So please do not put your effort and time in these kind of topics and in these kind of concepts of course they are important to learn but not from the az104 exam perspective now let's move on to the next question question number 203 that says that you have a resource group named rg1 that contains several unused resources and you want to use the azure cli to remove the rg1 and all its resources without requiring a confirmation very important line without requiring a confirmation which command should you use? Here you can see that we are given with four commands. First of all, we have az group delete with the name option rg1 and no wait yes. And then we have option b az group deployment delete name rg1 no wait. Option c az group update name rg1 remove. And lastly, option d az group wait deleted resource group name rg1. So what do you think is the correct answer? A little tricky one, but let me tell you the correct answer. That is option A, AZ group delete, name of the resource group, RG1, and no wait option selected as yes. So let's try to validate our answer. So here you can see that we are in this documentation that says AZ group, and we are given with lot of commands here. We have this AZ group create, we have this AZ group delete. Now if you remember the answer, we selected the AZ group delete command. So let's click on this one. So now you reach to the documentation for az group delete. Here you can see the syntax of the command. You can also see the examples. But our answer lies here in this section which says optional parameters. So here you can see that we have one option given here which says no wait as we also had in question as well or the options of the question. Here you can see that this option is basically when you do not want to wait for the long running operations to finish so default value is false but when you select it as a yes then you do not have to wait for the long running operations to finish and it will also not prompt you for the confirmation and that's exactly our ask in the question as well so we do not want to wait for the confirmation so that's why option a is the correct answer now let's jump on to the next question, question number 204, a different format completely. So let's jump on to it. It says that you have a Microsoft Intro ID tenant that has the contoso.onmicrosoft.com domain name. Now you have the domain name of Contoso registered at a third party registrar. You need to ensure that you can create the Intro ID users that have the names containing the suffix of at the rate contoso.com. Which three actions should you perform to answer move the appropriate action from the list of actions to the answer area and arrange them in the correct order. So first of all, please understand that you have to pick three actions and the actions should be in the right sequence. Otherwise, you will lose the marks. So the options given are option A, add a record to the public contoso.com DNS zone. Option B, add an Azure AD tenant, configure company branding and option D, create an Azure DNS zone. Option E, add a custom name. And lastly, option F, verify the domain. So let's check out what are the correct actions in the correct sequence. So at the first place comes add a custom name. Secondly, we will add a record to the public contoso.com DNS zone. And third step would be that we will verify the domain. So these are the three actions that you need to take in the correct sequence. Now let's move on to the next question, question number 205 that says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one. Now this subscription one contains the resource groups in the following table. RG1, which is the resource group, has a web app named web app one. And this web app one is located in West Europe and you want to move this web app one to the RG2. What is the effect of this move? 
And here you can see that we are given with this table here, which says name of the RG1 or the resource group. What are the regions these resource group lies and what are the policies against these resource group? So now let's look at what are the options given. So here we see that we are option A. We have this option A that says the app service plan for the web app one remains in the West Europe. Policy two applies to the web app one. So remember that we are moving the web app one to the resource group two. Moving on, option B says that the app service plan for the web app one moves to the North Europe and the policy two applies to the web app one. Then we have option C that says the app service plan for the web app one remains in the West Europe and the policy one applies to the web app one. And the last option given is that the web service plan for the web app one moves to the North Europe and the policy one applies to the web app one. So friends, let me give you the correct answer, but I recommend to pause the video, read the question once again, understand this table given here and all the policies and all the options given here in the question. Try to answer yourself and match up with the answer that I'm giving now. And the correct answer is option A. The app service plan for the web app one remains in West Europe and the policy two applies to the web app one. And here you need to understand that you can move an app to another app service plan as long as the source plan and the target plan are in the same resource group and the geographical region. And also understand that the region in which your app runs is the region for the app service plan it is in. And lastly, you cannot change the region for any app service plan. And in case you're looking for more information on how to manage app service plan in Microsoft Azure, this is the documentation. Here you can understand how to create an app service plan, how to move an app to another app service plan, which was the exact requirement for this question as well. Then you will also be able to understand move an app to a different region. Then how can you scale an app service plan? And also how can you delete an app service plan? And then the next steps. So this is a good documentation. Read through it. All the documentation links are given in the description box. So in the description box, you will find the link to this documentation here, which is a Google doc. And once you reach to this documentation, just scroll down and you will reach to this index section. Once you click on any episode, you will be able to find out. Let's go to this episode number 10. So you will be able to find out the YouTube link for that video. And then you will be able to also find out all the documentation that I used in that particular episode. Similarly, you can find out the episodes, their YouTube link and their documentation links. So I hope it was a good exercise for your mind today. You got to think in the same pattern as appears in the real exam AZ104. And also my friends, in case you have some questions that are not clear to you, in case you find some topics that are difficult to understand, do let me know in the comment section or you can also email me at connectors at the rate the tech blackboard.com and what i will do is i will try to incorporate your questions your concepts your feedback suggestions in the coming episodes and also you can avail all the question and answer pdf files for all the series on microsoft azure and amazon aws and for that please check out the join button community membership and in case you still don't understand then please email me at connectors at the rate the tech blackboard.com and i will surely reply to the same and that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.